Well, hello, it's Kirsten Liebelt. Come on in, you guys. It's so good to see you. It's Wednesday night, and actually, you know what? I should have worn blue. I had blue on earlier. I should have worn blue. The new baby, the new baby is a boy. So I'm so excited. So I will let um, let me get that out of the way because this is like an announcement, right? So um, my daughter just had her third baby and it's a boy and he is the third boy of their family so we're just all boys with our grandbabies now and it's so exciting and um so he actually came two weeks early you guys and I um I was like was not expecting at all that he was going to be coming and so I didn't even have my ringer on and um am I good to go Carrie on Instagram. And so I didn't even know. Hi. Oh, I must be good to see you. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know. It's so exciting. So I wasn't ready. And I didn't have my ringer on. And like, I don't wake up in the middle of the night like that. I mean, like sometimes I'll go to the bathroom and stuff, but I don't even, oh, Lisa, you're so sweet. So I don't even like, um, uh, I don't check my phone in the middle of the night when I go to the bathroom or anything like that. So anyway, um, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God woke me up because at like 2.17, 2.16, 2.17 in the morning, Sunday morning, I wake up and I look at my phone, which is unusual. And I have four phone, four calls for my daughter. I knew immediately what was going on. And so um, she was actually having, this is her third home birth. And so I called her and she's like, yep, yeah, my water's breaking. And I'm like, I'm on my way. And so I went over there and it was just so amazing. I got to be there for her first one and now her third one. And they, like I said, they're all at home and um, amazing. So his name is Ethan Carey and Carey is my husband's name, K-E-R-R-Y. And he was seven pounds, 10 ounces. And he, she, her water broke at like 130 and she called the midwife right away and she had him at like 4 30 you guys like crazy crazy and it was like such an amazing experience and i'm just i could just go on and on and on but i won't but thanks you guys you guys are awesome thank you so much so it's just been that's why i didn't jump on on monday i know yay for her right um i didn't jump on on monday because we ended up over there because like i said two other boys. So, you know, she's a little busy, <laughs> just a little, just a little, they're all, all three of them are exactly 18 months apart, 18 months apart. Okay. So anyway, so I'm, I'm wearing pink and I should have been wearing blue, but that's okay. That's okay. So it's good to see you guys jump on in. Um, what I wanted to do tonight was I just happened to be in a couple of different conversations today, completely separate of each other. And they, we were talking about fruits that spike your sugars. And I thought I am totally going to do a live on this, you know? So my dad being a type two diabetic, um, I have very vivid memories of certain things. And one of them happens to be all of the fruit that he ate. And it kind of came to my attention this morning when I saw, um, I actually put it in my stories, my Instagram stories, and then my, it's my personal Facebook page. It goes to there. And it was a screen recording of Dr. G uh, not he's not a doctor, he's a scientist, Gary Brucka. And he was talking about how the worst diet that you can go on if you are diabetic is to go on the diet that's listed on the website for the American Diabetes Association. And it was very interesting. And I thought, this is what I talk about a lot just because of the, my own experience, you know, because like I'm not a doctor, I'm just an Italian girl who grew up in a um an insulin dependent home my dad was insulin dependent you know shots in the belly the whole thing and he died from type 2 at 63 and i was only 30 at the time i was super young i need to probably have my mic by me i'm not remembering okay i'm good okay and so I just grew up with a lot of type two around me, a lot of obesity around me, like this was very normal, right? And so, you know, food is very, you know, like you, you, I always talk about that, like you celebrate with food, you mourn with food, all of those things. Anyway, and um, 
I was actually insulin resistant with my first two babies. I, I started, I noticed, I, I didn't put it all together, but I was gestational with one hypoglycemic with the other. And, and then I, that's in my early twenties. And then I hit 30, my dad dies. I still don't do anything about my sugars. And then I get to my forties and my mom is like all over me about my sugars. What, you know, do you even know what they are? Do you even pay attention? Do you ever go to the doctor? I'm like, mom, leave me alone. That's how I ended up starting with supplementation. Cause I didn't want to do my foods. I tell the story kind of a lot. But it's because I want people to understand, like, you know what, sometimes we're just floating through life, right? Well, when De Gary Brecka starts talking about things like that, I'm like, you know, it is the saddest thing ever. And he was saying it's because, and I wish I could remember the number now that I'm talking to you about it, but I forget the number of billions of dollars that he said, maybe it was like $110 billion industry is diabetes for, for the um, industry, for the P-H-A-R-M-A industry every single year. And it's really, really sad that we get such bad information and misinformation. But, you know, I do remember my dad, he literally would sit on this chair and, you know, watch TV. And he always had a, um, a serrated knife, like a just a little steak knife, because he would cut his oranges and he would spiral them and then he would cut them, you know, like, like, so he would peel triangular sections. Like these are strong memories, right? He would peel these triangular sections off of his oranges and he would just sit there and eat oranges and oranges and oranges and bananas. And he was just wrecking his body. But I'm sure that he was told that he could have so many fruit servings a day. And I'm sure that he was told he should have nine to 11 grain servings a day. So therefore he should be eating, you know, Cheerios with skim milk. And he literally was spiking his sugars all day long. And that thus the downward trend, the downward spiral into using insulin injections in your belly, um, the downward spiral into heart issues and you know, um, you know, emergency heart surgeries, quadruple bypass, pacemaker, and then eventually kidney dialysis. And then he passes at 63. So I'm super curious about a lot of different things now, because this is a lot many years later. And um, I think that what triggered me to begin with was the question of why would he die if he was on all of those amazing, you know, 21st century meds? Um, actually, it would have been 20th century at the time, but that's not the point because he died in 95. But since then, I've just done a lot of study. And so um, I just know that for women, when I talk to women, they just want to lose weight. And if you don't know that insulin is a hormone and that um, you can't lose weight if you have high insulin or high sugars, then all of a sudden that's a curiosity for, for women. And they really want to know, okay, well then how do I fix that? Because it's, it's natural for us to want to change sizes, right? That's what we want to do. For some people you're already type two and you're like, oh crud, like this is not going the direction I need it to go. And now I'm having a hard time dealing with my morning sugars, let's just say. I mean, there are many different variations of this, right? So um, thank you. you. Oh, yeah, Gary Brecka. Isn't he just great? I love listening to him. Brecka, yep. B-R-E-C-K-A. -E Somebody answered that. Thank you so much for answering that. Yeah, you know what, Julie, that article on erythritol, I had a link on my website uh, regarding that. And I do want people to hear this, go to YouTube and look up Maria and Craig Emmerich and their answer about that erythritol study. They said that is the faultiest study they've ever seen. And it really, you know, it keeps people from then doing something. And I, you know, we don't want any barriers. We want to cut down all barriers. So I used to have it on my website and I took it off. Um, okay. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Anyway. So in light of all of that, when I have conversations with people, and remember, I'm the I'm the one who avoided type two. So I feel like this world that we're living in right now, people just need to know that there are, yeah, Julie, um, that there are simple things that we can do to shift things. And you don't have to, in my opinion, um, I just had somebody reach out to me today and said, tell me about the trio of supplements. Those are the three supplements with the three ingredients that help with insulin sensitivity. 
tell me because I can't afford the $1,200 a month injections. And I'm like, yep, I get it. And then I shared with her a testimony of somebody who um, was on Ozempic and lost the weight and then couldn't get it refilled, even though she's type two. And then she gained the weight back. And I mean, there was this journey. Um, and if you're on Instagram, I have a highlight bubble at the top of my profile. You look crooked to me. The top of my um, profile uh, testimonies of the trio for you guys. But she eventually did the trio in December, just now, December 2023. And um, immediately within two weeks, like lost seven pounds. I think she's lost 20 now. And um, it makes a difference. So what if God gave us some simpler answers, right? I'm just saying. So I'll chat about the trio here um, in just a minute, uh, only because the one that is out of stock, the glucose product that is out of stock, I actually have inventory coming to my house tomorrow. And I'm almost, it's almost all spoken for, but not quite. So you have to message me if you are already refilling your trio and you're refilling the first two and you need that third one, I can, you, we, you can pay me separately and I can mail it to you. Or if you're local in Minnesota, yay, I get to see you. So I just want to put that out there, but let's talk about the fruit because this has been, I feel like we, we are so indoctrinated. Oh my gosh, you guys, our brains are so indoctrinated. I know Haley, I know she's in New Zealand and she can't get it there. And I know, I just spoke to a lady today who's in the Caribbean. And um, she really was like, I said, I can do the Dominican Republic. And she's like, no, she's on an island. I don't know about white mulberry extract, Haley. I don't know. I would look that up. I Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I wish I did, but I want to be honest about that. So, um, you know what? PK Palms, DM me. Will you do that, please? Because otherwise, after this is done, it's going to go away. So you have to DM me and say I was on your live and I want to know about the trio. Okay, do that. Judy, same thing. I know, you guys, it's so... Um, so... Okay, so I'll just tell you quickly. So it's three supplements. I have three ingredients to help with insulin sensitivity. And this has been something that I have used for 13 years. Okay. And it was a big, I did not expect the testimonies to come to me from so many type two people. Because again, number one, I'm not a doctor. Number two, I'm not like, you know, like I'm not a nutritionist or anything like that. I'm just an Italian girl who figured it out. And so when I started sharing, you know, um, you know, my own results, just with being able to turn back insulin resistance, and then finally be able to lose weight. So like in my 50s, I went from a 2x down to a large. And um, that's because when you get your insulin and your sugars down, anyway. And but the testimonies, some of my favorite ones are from people who are already type two, because it's not me saying anything, they're just getting the results that they wanted. And so that makes me very happy. So you have to DM me and uh, to ask me about that. It's so sad. Oh, you called them and they didn't even know. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Well, you know what? You put your, you put that, you, you know, you put a bug in their ear, so to speak, you know, of the company so that maybe they would. It has to do with countries and their allowance of ingredients. So that's where that, that's why. Because we're in over 100, 100 countries and territories, but not all countries allow all the same ingredients. So that's where the issue falls in. And when, um, you know, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. That is the way that that goes. But let's talk about food, you guys, okay? Because I do, I'm going to go back to we are so indoctrinated to believe certain things. Um, and they're just not true. Like, remember the food pyramid, 9 to 11 servings at the bottom of the food pyramid. No, just no, just no, don't do that. <laughs> because what you're doing is you're literally spiking your sugars all day long. And I know people are like, <coughs> excuse me, you know, well, what about whole grain? And what about this? And what about that? And I, I get it. But you see, once you are insulin resistant, your game has changed. It's not the same anymore. And the problem is, is that you can be insulin resistant for years and years and years and never even know it because your sugars aren't high yet. 
it's keeping your sugars down. So you think that you're fine, but what they need to be doing is a fasting insulin test if you really want to know. Now, you don't have to have that done. You can guess, like there's lots of symptoms of insulin resistance. But I'm just telling you, this is why this is such an issue and people don't know it. So before we know that our sugars are high, we just think that, well, it's all about balance. We have to have carbs all the time for energy or if we're working out or, oh, we have to add a lot of fiber to our diet. We have to do, you know, whatever the marketing says, you know, like it's, oh, it's low fat, it's heart healthy, it's whole grain, it's enriched, it's this, it's that, it's all of the things, it's you know, all of these added things and whatever. And the truth is, is that they literally are, is this why they call it a silent killer? Probably. Yeah, Australia and New Zealand don't, yeah, they, I know. It's true. That's actually why, you know what, uh, Barbara O'Neill was banned from Australia. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, some, some countries are a little more than others uh, to get ingredients into. So I know. I'm sorry. I know. Um, so we have to really be mindful of, okay, wait a second. Like, let's just pause for a second. If I view food, the foods that I'm going to talk about, if I can view food through the lens of insulin resistance, I can put on my glasses and I can view everything through the lens of insulin resistance. That's a different lens then the lens of count points, then the lens of calorie deficit only, then the lens of you have to have so many, um, uh, uh, I don't want to go down that, that rabbit trail, but there is a rabbit trail of how low should your cholesterol actually be? And really, is that the issue anyway? And, you know, things were designed so that things can be prescribed. If you're, picking up what I'm putting down. And so we have to actually become our own advocates and do our own research so that we can make the best decisions for us. So the question should always be, as you're putting something in your mouth, how much will this spike my sugars? Now, some people actually go and get it like a glucose meter. Um, and that's great because then you can see it for yourself. You can stop guessing. You can stop just listening to the packaging, you know, because like Gary Brecka said, the American Diabetes Association, their recommendation of a diet is a joke. He said, that's the opposite. That's like how to get it. That's like some strong language, right? But I'm just telling you, like, no, you don't eat grains all day long and spike your sugars and wonder why you're having a hard time. So let's talk about fruit for a second. So my dad was really, he the two things that he ate the most were oranges and bananas. And somebody had brought up today um, the little cutie tangerines. And I don't know if they have those in other countries like New Zealand, but we have, um, we have these little tangerines that are uh, fruit can be uh, it's created as a hybrid where they um, engineer it so that it is sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So my mom worked at the Landscape Arboretum, which is the horticulture division of the University of Minnesota. And they, it takes 20 years for them to develop an apple, like the Honeycrisp apple. It takes them about 20 years to hybrid it, hybrid it, hybrid it, <laughs> to mix it all up and make it amazing, um, you know, like perfectly crunchy and perfectly sweet and perfectly everything so that it's it can be marketed as this amazing apple and um they they do the same thing like those little cuties that you those you know cuties halos whatever the name is that you know them by that you you know we're giving to our children all the time because they're just darling and they're sweet and they're perfect it's like candy it's like candy and so that's what that's what we've done to our food supply is we make it sweeter and sweeter and sweeter by engineering things, right? Okay. So bananas and oranges were his thing. So number one, the, the first one on the list happens to be watermelon. It's really high in sugar. I don't think that's a really big surprise to anybody. Maybe a lot of these won't be a surprise, but I feel like this is just really good information. If you are diabetic, if you're insulin resistant, and you are wanting to, I just was my low power, and you are wanting to lose weight or keep your sugars low, berries only. Let me give you just the answer first. Let me, I'll give you the punchline. 
only berries. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about fruit. Watermelon has a high glycemic index due to its high natural sugar content and relatively low fiber content. Consuming large portions of watermelon can cause a quick spike in blood sugar levels. Number two, bananas. We kind of knew this. While bananas are nutritious and provide essential vitamins and minerals, they are also relatively high in carbohydrates and sugars. Ripe bananas in particular have a high, higher glycemic index and can lead to a rapid increase in blood glucose levels. Number three, ah, oh, love this one. Pineapple. Pineapple contains natural sugars, primarily fructose. Um, which can contribute to spike in blood sugar levels, especially when consumed in large quanti quantities or in the form of juice. And did you know that, number one, juice should never, ever, ever be consumed by somebody who is type two. Like juice is, um, juice is really bad. Like it's bad. And fructose can only be like metabolized by your liver. But juice glasses, when I was growing up, juice glasses were little like this. Now we're drinking juice in large containers or large glasses. It is literally the worst thing ever for your body. Like just don't do it. Um, but when they're talking about pineapple, um, you know, has a lot of fructose. Well, that's, that's what's in fruit, right? And your liver just like, at some point we have to give it a break because we're not just having a little bit, a little cup of juice like this we're doing that. And then we're eating all the food with the high fructose corn syrup in it. So like we're just doubling and doubling and tripling and quadrupling all of our sugar in many forms. And that fructose, high fructose corn syrup, your body can't do it. Um, the next one is mango. And I do love mangoes. Mangoes are so good. What if someone is cuckoo bananas? <laughs> Julie, I must have said that before. <laughs> Because I do say that. Cuckoo bananas. It's cuckoo bananas. Yep. Cantaloupe would give you a spike. Yep. Lip berries only, people. I'm telling you. It's just... I know that our bend is to try to cut a corner. But a good friend of mine just said recently, when you cut one corner, you end up with two more. So... I know we want to do like, oh, but what if I put, what if I take this food and I freeze it and I do this and I do that? Just like, seriously, like this is not rocket science. It's really not as hard as you think it is. And, and trust me, I'm Italian. Like I don't, I, I don't say this without having had my own struggle. This is why I started with supplements first because I didn't think I could ever, 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 ever trade out my foods. So I come from such an authentic place on this, but in the end, it's really not as hard as you think it is. There's so much variety in it. There really is. But anyway, Julie, you're so funny. Okay. Mangoes, delicious, but they're, and they're packed with vitamins and antioxidants, but they're also high in natural sugars, which obviously you could see that, right? Eating large portions of mango can cause a significant increase in blood glucose levels. The uh, number five, grapes. I know we all love grapes, don't we? Oh man. Grapes are so good, but it's another fruit that can raise blood sugar levels quickly due to their natural sugar content. Additionally, grapes have a relatively high glycemic index compared to some other fruits. And so the difference between um, like uh, when they say high glycemic index, they're talking about how fast does your sugar rise after eating like over the next two hours. And so does it rise really fast? Or does it take time? Just because something has a low and slow glycemic index still doesn't mean it's a, if it's wisdom. That's not what that means. It just means that it's it's slower to make a mess, <laughs> in my opinion. That's really just my opinion of that. Um, cherries, sweet and flavorful, but they also contain natural sugars that can impact blood sugar levels, especially when consumed in large amounts. And then the last one that they did were figs. Figs are rich in natural sugars and can cause blood sugar levels to rise rapidly, particularly when dried. Dried figs have a higher concentration of sugar compared to fresh figs. Um, and then when I had pulled up some information about um, just foods in general that are super not wise when you're insulin resistant, fruit juices, breakfast cereals, and it doesn't mean sugared. It could just be Rice Krispies or Cheerios or it's just a high, they just high, high jump in your blood sugar. Flavored yogurts, because they're going to have a lot of sugar in them. Granola bars, sugar-free products, like a lot of sugar-free candies and stuff will still spike your sugars. You don't even know it. 
They can also have laxative effects. White bread and pasta. And then they did talk about dried fruits. Those dried fruits are super concentrated. They might seem like a healthy snack, but they are concentrated sources of sugar and can lead to a significant increase in blood sugar levels. Uh, sports drinks, commercial salad dressings, because they have a lot of sugar in them, and smoothies. Smoothies are really horrible, actually. Um, and Gary Brecka talks about that, too. He says, you know, if you have a smoothie and you are then blending all of these fruits down, you are like quadrupling their sugar effect, their negative sugar effect on your body. That gets really bad. So smoothies are not a great idea. Um, anyway, so let me just see what we got going here. Your insulin was high, was on the high end of normal. Does this make me insulin resistant? I'm not a doctor, but I would say yes, that's probably, that's probably true. I mean, you know, yep. Hey, Joy. Oh, Joy. Hello. Good to see you. Joy is in North Dakota. Is it snowing over there, Joy? <laughs> we have it coming our way. Meow. I'm in Minnesota. Uh, God has put all fruit on this earth for us to eat. Just eat protein with the fruit in moderation. Protein first and limit the amount of some fruits. Just your opinion. So, Gloria, I totally understand exactly what you're saying. I really do. And I frequently will tell this to people when I'm talking to them, like behind the scenes. I do not believe that God made bad food. He didn't. However, we have chosen a diet in our country where we have put ourselves in a position where we have to simmer down. So when somebody says to me, you don't eat beans, what do you mean? Or you don't eat grains. Didn't God make grain? Yep. But he, number one, didn't make it the way we do it. And number two, we processed it. We took away all that fiber and then we enriched it. We did all this crap to it, crud. We did a lot of crud to it. And then we did it over and over, like all day long until we were insulin resistant. And then we were insulin resistant all day long, all year long, all decade long until all of a sudden our glucose levels are high. And then what happens? Oh, then we're free diabetic. So to somebody who's type two diabetic, absolutely. You cannot have the same advice as the person who is not it's not the same anymore. So the, the playing field is different. So all of that advice that's given to us about freezing this and doing this and whatever, all the stuff, um, you know, or even just like that. And I understand what you're saying because, you know, you can change the way that something works in your body that way, but that's not, um, it's different and it's, and it matters how insulin resistant somebody is because it's not all the same. And so the people that I end up talking to you um, are like, they're having a hard time getting their morning sugars to come down and stay down. And that takes a healing journey. And we can't cut corners if we're trying to heal and get to a place where we are metabolically flexible again. It just takes so much time. But I'm so glad you brought that up because I feel like that is definitely one of the things that needs to be brought to light. That um, I know we can listen to the Today Show all day long. We can listen to Good Morning America and the latest article, you know, from you whatever the New York Times or the latest study that you know is coming out from wherever and blah 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 blah. There's so much information that is very very conflicting. And so what happens is then in our brains, we go, okay, I'm going to take all of this insane amounts of information and I'm going to find what I consider balance. That sounds balanced. Oh, that sounds balanced. And that's what we do. And we're like, okay, I think I have it figured out enough now between watching, you know, I don't know the, I only know it by Regis and Kelly. So I don't know who's. Regis and Kathy Lee and then Regis and Kelly. Like, I don't know. It's Kelly and Mark, maybe. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, you know, I saw somebody talking about on, on, you know, Kelly and Mark and, or I saw somebody, you know, on this or this show or this show or da, 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 da. I'm going to take all of that and I'm going to manipulate it to believe that I'm living in balance. But the truth is, is that numbers don't lie. They don't lie. So if somebody comes to me and they say, I just can't lose weight and you have to tweak it and, and tone it down a little further, it's okay. Like, don't be discouraged by that. You are combating propaganda all day, every day. You're literally combating propaganda because 
it's all owned by industry. So they're going to tell you that their crop is amazing. And they're going to tell you that their med is amazing. And they're going to tell you that all you need is balance. Like, don't be so like strict. That is not sustainable. The heck it's not. Do you want to know what's not sustainable? Being on a lazy Susan of meds. That's not sustainable. Meds don't heal you. They don't reverse anything. They help you to manage maybe at best. So it really frustrates me that we are being told that we shouldn't be too um, religious isn't the right word. Um, well, I guess maybe strict was just the only word. Don't go, don't go over the deep end because you'll never be able to sustain that. I call baloney on that. I call baloney on that. What's not sustainable is being sick, being exhausted, being fatigued, not being able to get down on the floor with your grandbabies, never ever losing the weight, going on another med, upping that med, having the side effects. That's not sustainable to me. I, I refuse for my life to be that way. So anyway, that's just, oh, so Joy, you're not. Okay. <laughs> I know you said that a long time ago, probably five minutes ago. That's funny. Um, oh, you, you're in North Dakota. It's not snowing right now. Okay. Okay. Ah, we have had like no snow and now we're going to get winter. It's kind of crazy. But anyway, so I just get really fired up about that. So your glucose. Okay. Yep. Some artificial sweeteners too. And I, I feel like we have to, so we do make it so much more complicated than it actually is. We really do. I understand. I understand the concept of we don't want to be limited. Um, but number one, it's very similar to like um, when you put children on a playground and you have fences around the playground, um, they feel secure because they can, they can work within a structure. But when you take the fences away, they actually huddle closer to the inside of the playground because there aren't any boundaries there. And the truth is, is that like even somebody brought up artificial sweeteners and make sure you understand the difference. Like, you know, stevia is a plant. And so I use stevia all the time, but there might be a company like that you don't know if they've added something into it. So you just check your labels, right? Because everybody's going to mess with our food supply. They're just going to do it. So you just have to pay attention. But you do have to become an assessor of yourself. Be your own assessor. Because then you can be like, oh, well, that actually works for me and I'm I'm okay. That's, you know, that that particular brand of stevia or whatever, urethritol or whatever. Um, and that's why I like following Maria Emmerich. Because Maria Emmerich will do a lot of the testing, you know, she'll bring the information and then, you know, we don't have to work so hard. But she's always working with people that are, you know, needing to have a healing journey. And um, that's really important because it's not just somebody who is like barely insulin resistant. It might be somebody that has a very severe autoimmune condition, right? And um, that can be very frustrating uh, if you're just trying to live according to the marketing of the world. So anyway, you were talking about your, your sugar levels. Your fasting glucose is 102. You can't bring it lower than, uh, oh, and then somebody else said, this is me. I can't bring it lower than 150. And were you talking about your morning sugars, 150? Nasty side effects and nauseated all the time. I know. I'm sorry. I really am, you guys. That's why I just want to, I want to shoot people straight. You know, I, I really do. Like, no fluff, you guys. This is reversible, but we do have to stop listening to the crud that's being told to us. We really do. So yes, yeah, so 150 is in the morning. So one of my favorite testimonies of the trio is this, and I just told this to somebody tonight. So she found out that she was, um, she's right around my age, and she found out that she was type two, three years ago because her A1C was 13. And um, 
And that's how she found out. And then she worked with her doctor and she got her A1C down to 5.9, which is really good. Um, you know, that's getting close, right, to being normal. And But she could not lose weight. And her morning sugars were still just stinkers. So they were, so she started the trio, which you just take them according to the bottles. You don't, and there's nothing special about whatever. It just happens to help your body function from the inside out. And um, she started that in September of 2023, just a few months ago. And within two and a half months, she was able to bring her morning sugars down from the 180s down to the 150s for the first time. And she's on meds. She was on meds and she lost 14 pounds. Now she's gone on and she's, she's done even better than that, but that's, that was the first two and a half months. So my, my point in even telling people that is what if there were pieces, um, berries, linky York, link York 24 berries only. We just went through all of the, all of the, um, the fruits. Um, not all of them, but you know, a lot of them. But the morning sugars are a stinker. It's called Dawn Phenomenon. And so when you wake up and you still have high sugars and you haven't eaten anything yet. And um, Dr. Berg, Eric Berg talks about how Dawn Phenomenon, it can take like a full year to, to get to a place where you are healing that. And so there's no question that you have to like really come in, like pull in your food. Try not to cut corners, but inside of pulling, pulling in, there's a ton of freedom in that. And I know it sounds like the opposite, but that ha same thing, like when I'm talking about like the playground with the kids, there's a lot of freedom when you actually have the fences up because then it gives you opportunity. You stop then using all of your brain space, questioning everything all the time. Now you're like, oh, I know my boundaries. I know what my parameters are. I'm going to focus on meat, eggs, greens, berries, full fat dairy. And then I'm going to throw in maybe some nuts like nut flowers, you know, and maybe you don't do it all the time if you're trying to lose weight. Maybe you limit some of your dairy if you're stalling out on your weight, whatever. But inside of that, you can create a ton of things. It sounds limiting because the list is limiting, but it's not. Like I thought I had to give up everything that I love to eat. And I didn't. I just had to trade out the ingredients to the things that I love. So you can take eggs and you can make all sorts of custards and ice creams and you can do all sorts of amazing things. And that's why I teach the, um, the Maria Emmerich bread, the egg white bread, because that's super versatile. Or I teach the homemade chocolate pudding um, because that's super versatile. And, you know, you can like high protein and love your food. Like it's amazing. Okay, hold on. I think I missed something. Nope, this is, no, this is pretty much a really good keto conversation. Apples are, are high in sugar. And it depends. You know what? Again, if you're not insulin resistant, this conversation is probably not for you then. Because if, when you are insulin resistant, you are metabolically not very flexible anymore. You were, you were born metabolically flexible. I mean that, you know, that's assuming that, you know, your body's, you know, whatever, assuming that you don't have anything going on, right? You're born with that, but this is what we're doing. It, 50 years ago, the only people that had fatty liver were alcoholics. Now it's in our children. What are we doing wrong? We're eating a lot of cereal, granola bars, prepackaged foods. We're eating a lot of maybe takeout foods where it used to be a treat to eat out. Now we're eating out all the time. A lot of seed oils. Um, we're, we're doing so many things that are creating insulin resistance. And so in order to turn that back, if that is your goal, then you have to stop spiking your sugars. You just have to stop. And it is, um, otherwise, you know what? Maybe you only spike them enough just to keep you frustrated with your weight, but it's not ruining your health anymore. You know what I mean? And that is, that's an option. Like you can still, um, 
Once you're type two, though, that's probably a different conversation, right? And again, I'm not a doctor, but if I was type two, there's no way. Because I watched what happened to my dad. Because if every day you're doing this all day long, game over. Joyce, you can message me in Messenger. Okay, hold on. I want to make sure. So uh, the question about keto. No, this is basically a keto conversation, but it's a good keto conversation. It's not a, I'm going to market to you and tell you that things are keto friendly. And then you're going to eat them and go, oh, I'm eating keto. And you don't realize that there are certain ingredients in there, like prepackaged foods that you didn't know about that are still spiking your sugars and you didn't even know. So this is a real food, whole food keto conversation. Oh, good. Yes. Make the bread. Make the bread. And then send me a picture. Darn, I know. I'm sorry. Vivian, I'm describing you to a T. When I said berries, is it blueberries only? No, huh? Blackberries, raspberries, strawberries are probably maybe a little higher in sugar. Again, we have to be so careful. The reason why is because things are things that have been tampered with you guys. So if you go to the store and I'm just guessing at this point now, but if you go to the store and you see, just think, okay, I'm going to talk about grapes for a second, even though grapes would not be on the list. They now have cotton candy grapes. Well, do you think they actually just grow, grew that way? Or do you think that maybe somebody created them with, um, some sort of hybrid thought process. It's the same thing with berries. So um, like I saw something and I wish I could remember the name now, but it was a blueberry, but it was a special, like in a special package. And it said, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think about what it was, but it was a special kind of blueberry. And I'm like, mm. and they were big and I bet they were juicy and I bet they were sweet, 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 right? So our fruit has changed tremendously over the years because we have changed it. We're not eating fruit in its original form anymore for the most part that in the store, we're just not because they created it so that it would taste a certain way. So it would be more appealing, etc. So that's why you got to just whatever. Do I eat things that I don't like? No. <laughs> what would I eat that I don't like? Um, I'm trying to think. No, no, because the whole concept now, number one, I do have a Facebook group. You guys can get in there if you want to. And I do a free challenge every month, but I talk mainly about targeted supplementation. I talk about the trio because this is so integral in the, in the whole conversation. And, and I'll say it again. Um, one of the pro in much of the United States, not all of the United States, um, there is a product, the glucose product that is out of stock. It is sold out. The other two are available. In Canada, it's available. I'm so happy for my Canadian people. That's great. Um, I do have some inventory coming to my home tomorrow. If anybody needs to know that, you need to refill your trio or purchase it for the first time, you have to message me. I honestly, my list, I got, I'm going to be super honest. Like it's almost completely accounted for the glucose product. Having said that, in the Facebook group, I talk about the trio a lot and sub targeted supplementation in general, because there are other supplements that you can take that are helpful for your body to function better. Um, and you can find them on my website. I talk about food, ingredient trade outs, and a lot of my story, because I honestly didn't think I could trade out foods. But the truth is, is that what I did was I just asked myself, what are the foods that I really love? And then how do I trade them out? How do I find a way to recreate them? And I wasn't the creative one. I was following people like Maria Emmerich, who said, do this, try this trick, try this hack. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's genius. And then I teach it in the Facebook group. So the trio are the th there are three supplements. You can go and look on my website. It's kirstenleebelt.com. And you'll see a welcome message there. And then you'll see what the trio is. It's a uh, second button. 
And it's just something that I have used over 10 years now, over 10 years, because I knew that I had to do something. I started my life out thinking that type two was genetic because that's what I was told. And in fact, when my dad needed a kidney transplant and I was a match, they wouldn't let me give him one of my kidneys because he, he started being type two when he was really young, when he was 35. And so they said, no, you can't do that because it's genetic. So in my head, it's always genetic, right? But I always kind of I always kind of knew that wasn't really a full answer. And that's, it kind of really started me into studying this whole thing. And when I started to hear things like type two is not genetic. I mean, there can be predispositions, blah, 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 but it is cultural and not every nation has type two. Hello. Like it's the way that we eat. And there are countries that when they began to Westernize their food, they started having type two diabetes in their cultures. So like now I know for sure it's not genetic. And I also know for sure it's a diet related disease. And I also know for sure that it's reversible, you know? And so I love listening to people like Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Eric Berg. Um, I like recipes from Maria Emmerich. Uh, trying to think of who else. Uh, Gary Brecka is interesting to listen to. Um, Barbara O'Neill. There are a lot of people, you know, that I take bits and pieces from because uh, they're talking about an alternative conversation. You know, if, and I, I, I don't know if the numbers are correct that it's a $110 billion industry, but if that's correct, if that's what the video was that I saw today, that, that the diabetes industry, the, the med industry connected is $110 billion a year. Um, they're just going to keep telling you to, you know, it's all about balance. They're not going to heal you. They're not going to return. They're not going to reverse it for you. You made egg bites with Parmesan, onion, green pepper, creme, creme fraiche or cream. Oh, cream, fresh tarragon, oregano, salt, pepper in a muffin tin. Julie, that sounds amazing. You're making me hungry. <laughs> that sounds so good. Yeah, the creativity is like limitless. So you struggle because you have food sensitivities. You cannot have eggs, dairy, wheat, soy, or yeast. You've been eating that way for almost 15 years, then menopause. I'm so frustrated. Oh, Evie. Yeah. Yeah, that is challenging. So can you do egg whites at all? Or can or are you allergic to both the yolk and the white? Sometimes people are allergic only to one part. Yeah, and menopause, I would say um, adaptogenic herbs. I talk about those a lot. And I don't know if, yeah, I, I that was the same time that I started supplementation for my sugars. I started supplementation for my brain fog. I had no idea that it was hormonal. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. I was very unaware of my body. I was very like, I was in my forties, just like, I don't know, clueless, major clueless. And, um, but I started adaptogenic herbs for that reason. And I do talk about that too. I talk about the purple packet a lot with women, a lot, because we are not crazy. I promise you we're not crazy. And again, we might end up having like, I think I talked about it in my stories this morning. You know, we can end up with like anxiety or sadness and, you know, they just want to give you meds. And actually, if we would support our adrenals, which regulate our hormones, we could have a completely different universe and we don't have to feel like we're so crazy and we don't have to feel like we're so unheard. And that goes for both insulin resistance and for menopause, you know, and we got on this conversation last week a lot, actually, with the purple packet, because, you know, 
one coin, two sides. One side is the insulin hormone conversation and the other side are all the other hormones. <laughs> it's the same coin because insulin is a hormone, but people don't know that. So you end up having two conversations that seem like they're disconnected, but they're all connected. So whether you're talking about like um, hormone imbalance symptoms, like, you know, mood swings or um, anxiety or depression or sleep, you know, insomnia or, um, uh, like your memory is kind of glitching on you a little bit, um, anger, that low grade anger that happens, uh, you know, it's right under the surface. Um, all of these things, or whether you're talking about insulin resistance and you can't lose weight and you're so frustrated about that. And, um, you know, you've got, you, you're exhausted all the time and you're hangry, you eat something and then you're like super hungry and all of those signs of insulin resistance, it's all, connected. Um, but I haven't found a way completely yet. I'm sure it'll come to me how to create a conversation that incorporates it all. <clears throat> but it's all fixable, in my opinion, in my lay person opinion, it's all fixable. And you can use things that God gave us, he gave us adaptogenic herbs, he gave us, you know, um, in in our food, typically, and in our soil, typically, but we have now, we don't turn over our soil the way we're supposed to. We don't let it rest. We don't do a lot of things. We strip things of their nutrients and then we enrich them. So we've created deficiencies, blah, blah, blah. So it there are some simple answers when it comes to targeted, you just, you target like an arrow supplementation towards, you know, your adrenals, you target supplements towards your insulin or towards your sugars. And you can make such a difference. And it's not rocket science. It's actually super, super simple. Um, and then the same with the food. Food can cause depression and anxiety. Food can cause like the way that we eat is literally messing up our mental health. And so we have to like strip away processed foods and things that are filled with seed oils and really like taking our livers and just keeping them bogged down so that they can't govern our hormones. They can't govern our, our sugars. They can't um, help us to metabolize fat and lose weight. Like we're doing it to ourselves. And so we have to turn the ship around and I'm telling you, it is way easier than you think it is. It's just getting super clear about being streamlined. It's just being, it's just being super clear. My phone is going to, I got um, juice issues with my phone here. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of how that goes. But it's, it's very interesting and it's not, it's just not as hard. Autoimmune paleo will help you weed out those foods. Yep. I would say keto even further is way better. Because paleo, I went paleo first and it wasn't enough. Because paleo, you're still eating too many starchy vegetables. No egg products. No, none at all. That's challenging. Keto works no longer diet type two. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Just food and herbs and no drugs. Thank you, Lord. I love that so much. Hold on just a second. Okay. So how do you do it? Um, well, I started with supplements. It's what I did. That's what I talk about all the time, the trio, um, which are three supplements that have three ingredients that help with insulin sensitivity. And then... When I traded out my foods, I did one ingredient at a time and I did one recipe at a time. And I talk about this a lot inside of the Facebook group, do things without shame. And it's a really important factor because a lot of this, most of this is mindset. It's mindset right here. And so my best piece of advice to somebody is, be a good assessor of yourself. Be a good assessor. 
be a good assessor of your emotions, of your mindsets. Um, but then also be really proud of yourself for the steps that you are taking. And so that's a big piece of the puzzle. But um, when it comes to food, uh, a good, clean keto can turn a lot of things around. Now, there are people who do go car carnivore. And the reason why is because if somebody has like some autoimmune or mental health, that is one way that they can kick things into high gear and turn things back. There's a fertility doctor out of New York that uses carnivore to help his patients um, uh, become pregnant again because, or for the first time, I suppose, because it just turns things around. It does things for your hormones. And remember, insulin is a hormone. So I'm just saying, like, it's no longer about marketing when you want a result on something. Oh, um, so you can go on. Um, you can do one or two things. You can message me, DM me, and I will give you information. I'll, I'll like chat with you about the supplementation if you need to have understanding. You can also go to, I have a website, kirstenliebelt.com, my first and last name.com. And there's the first button is a welcome message from me. The second button will tell you about the trio and a few other targeted supplements. And then you'll, you'll be able to read things for yourself. One button is for the Facebook group. Um, there's even a free PDF on there for you for resources. There's a video on make, how to make the egg white bread. There's a lot on there. It's just one page. It's super simple. Um, but it's the beginning of turning things around. You can, the best testimonies that I have come from type two diabetics who they, they were at a standstill with their meds and they couldn't seem to either lose the weight or they couldn't get their sugars to come down. And when your sugars are high or your insulin is high, you can't lose weight. And that's very frustrating. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You don't know how. Um, can you text me? I'll give you a phone number to text. Mm hmm down 72. That's amazing. Amazing. So one of the, um, one of the three supplements is actually for your liver. Yeah. So this is, again, it's all connected fatty liver, fat around your organs, um, insulin resistance, uh, uh, glucose, like blood glucose, high levels. I like, it's all connected. And so I love the fact that the three supplements are helping with bringing down trace minerals that are helping you to bring down your insulin, bring down your sugars, helping your liver function, helping the, the belly fat that's around your organs. And people want help with belly fat anyway. But I mean, I love the fact that it's helping that system from the inside out like this. That makes me very happy. But anyway. Yeah, congratulations are in order. 72 pounds, that's phenomenal. And so I don't know if you need to lose more weight. Losing weight, losing losing weight doesn't um, fix your fatty liver. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's, I don't think that that's the, that's the key to fixing a fatty liver. So, yeah, no, because it doesn't, uh, No, because uh, it's not something that you can get on Amazon. You have to get you have to get things through me. But I have one that's sold out right now, so I have to have conversations. Oh, what was the meds? What was the meds? Okay, let me see if I'm missing anything over here. You guys have been so fun tonight, so engaging, so fun. I love this so much. So if you need anything, let me know. Let me know. 
you can always message me. There's also um, uh, on Instagram, I'm trying to think, let me look and see, because there might be a phone number right there that you can, you can text at too. The, uh, my website is actually on my Instagram profile. So if you just click on that, you can get to a phone number to text me if that helps you easier, if that makes it easier for you. So anyway, what a good night, you guys. So much fun. So I am going to go. I spent time with my new grandson tonight. That was amazing. He's just a little lima bean. He's just really tiny. Um, he was seven pounds, 10 ounces. And, um, really amazing. Mm. You have to ask your doctor. You have to ask your doctor about um, take, yeah, you, yeah, you always have to check with meds and stuff for sure. For sure. Oh, truly. I know. Thank you. I know. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's a good season. It's a good season. So Friday, I will come and do uh, testimonies. And um, if anybody needs help with anything, let me know. And in the meantime, have a really good night. And I hope that this was educational. And, you know, I always forget to ask people to like share things out and stuff if you think it's helpful for other people. But please do. Um, if you feel like there's somebody in your life that needs to have just a, you know, they need to go into a different direction. What I would not have given to have had this information and to have been able to help my dad when he was alive or, you know, whatever. It just was a long journey for me to do a lot of research on this. And so um, I want people to know that this is super doable. And I want people's hearts to be really encouraged that this is very, you know, this is doable. Happy snowstorm this weekend. Oh, man. Oy vey. Oh, Metformin and Trulicity. Yep, there you go. Okay. Oh, you just told your six daughters to follow me. God bless you. That's wonderful. Well, I hope that it helps. I really do. Because I, I just, I feel like we've been given a lot of confusing information. So let's sort it all out. And again, you can always jump into the Facebook group. It's for women. And the next challenge will be, I do a five-day challenge every month, and it will start literally on April 1st. And the whole idea is for people who, you know, you grab targeted supplementation, you go through the challenge, you nail the month, and then we'll do another one the next month. And you put enough months together. And before you know it, you're in a completely different place by the end of the year. You're in a completely different place you know, so that you can actually start making strides in your goals and not being so frustrated on a hamster wheel all the time. Because that's very, very like, that's hard. It's a hard place to live in. So anyway, all right, have a super good night, you guys be very, very blessed. And I will see you on Friday. Okay, how does that sound? So see you later. All right, I got to end my stream. Hold on. See you later, you guys.